we've got a lot of Ryzen news leading up to the CPU's inevitable launch. At this point, it's not too far away. So for today, we'll be recapping some of the news on the Ryzen stock CPU coolers, which we've sort of independently validated, looking at the Asus X370 boards and then some Ryzen die shots for a deeper dive of some of the architecture before getting to the proper review, which will eventually be posted, where we'll have more of the details fully explained. But for now, we can look at what is out there and what has finally been, to some extent, confirmed because it's all been rumors and leaks up until now. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Raw Fury, publishers of Kingdom, a side-scrolling city builder that we previously reviewed, and the new Tormentor X Punisher Hell em Up game where everyone has one HP. Click the link below for more information on those. In a previous content piece, we talked about how some motherboards at CES had the text S3 radiator support printed on them, at the AMD CES suite. And of course, no one from AMD would talk about that text, uh, but we've already shown that. We talked about what that probably means, which is going to be likely a stock cooler for one of the AMD Ryzen SKUs. It would probably be a higher end one or an overclocking targeted SKU. So S3.0 radiator support, we already know that's going to be a thing. And it will probably be in the line of these stock coolers for Ryzen. What we haven't talked about in the past is that there is probably also going to be an S1 and an S2. I've heard two types of names for these. I've heard S1, 2, and 3, and I've heard SR, 1, 2, and 3. We're just gonna go with S for now and drop the R. Uh, the S1 stock cooler, from what we've been able to gather, is supposed to be a 65 watt TDP CPU targeted cooler. So that would be the lower end of the coolers. I don't have any images for any of these right now. Uh, that'll probably have to wait until launch, but S2 is supposed to support 95 watt TDP CPUs and is also equipped with some form of RGB lighting. Whether that is through an MCU or not, I'm not clear on right now, but some form of RGB lighting, probably not too different from the Wraith cooler, although that was just a white LED. I would think it would be something similar to that just with the RGB since that's basically a requirement at this point. The S3 cooler, which we know thanks to that motherboard, I think it was a Biostar board or uh, Maxon, one of them. But thanks to that board, we know it is probably a radiator, so liquid cooler and AIO, uh, which actually conveniently, <laughs> this also shipped with AIOs back in the day. So it's not the first time AMD would be doing that. S3 is supposed to be rated for 125 watt TDP, and it's also going to include some form of LEDs hooked up through an MCU from what we've been able to gather. Uh, and that MCU would be theoretically controllable somehow. Now, what we also know is that some of the board vendors from what it sounds like will have their own applications that will allow modification of the S2 coolers or SR2 coolers uh, and their RGB LEDs. Not 100% sure exactly how that's going to work just yet, but that's kind of what what we know based on some information gathering. As a side note, from what we understand, the package height of the Ryzen CPUs will be a bit taller than the FX series CPUs, and that would explain why, at least in part, there are new mounting kits despite looking kind of the same if you just were to eyeball the board. Uh, the package height, as we understand it, should be higher though, so that would of course necessitate a different mounting kit. Moving on to motherboards, we've already detailed Gigabyte, MSI, Biostar, and a couple of other motherboards for the AM4 socket. But now we've got some news on Asus that they actually posted themselves. The immediate Ryzen lineup for Asus will be championed by the Crosshair 6 Hero and the Prime Series X370 board. Both of these are X370 chipset. The Prime one lands about where Strix lands in the marketing stack, though it looks like Strix has potentially been replaced in the AMD series boards with the word Prime. Starting with the Prime X370 motherboard, we see that ASUS is running three full-length PCIe slots, with two of them donning the ubiquitous armor that we've seen ticking every marketing box lately. The top PCIe slot on the Prime X370 is wired for X16, with the lower two wired for by 8 configurations. Looking over the board closely, we can spot the multi-GPU MUX chips just above CMOS, and that's something we've seen on most and the AM4 motherboards thus far, including MSI's boards at CES 2017. And we've already created an AMD Ryzen block diagram from previous content that explains the lane assignment, but we'll bring that back on the screen now. You can check our AM4 chipset differences video and article for a full breakdown on the AB and X300 series chipsets and the X370. 
Looking to the far right of the Prime X370 board, there are eight total SATA 3 slots rated at the usual six gigabits per second with one M.2 location above the top PCIe X16 slot. It appears that this M.2 slot can run by 4 PCIe or SATA, both of which are supported by the chipset. Near the CPU socket are the large inductors for the VRM, and those appear to be accompanied by an actual heatsink for once. It has fins rather than a just a big block of aluminum that doesn't actually really cool all that efficiently. There's also an RGB header adjacent to the chassis and AIO pump headers all near the CPU socket. We're expecting the Prime X370 to land between 150 and 180 for price point in the US anyway. The other model, the Crosshair 6, hosts the same PCIe configuration though with different MUX positioning on the board and it also has the same SATA 3 slot configuration. The M2 port has also been relocated just south of the chipset out of the way of the GPUs with the RGB header located just below the M2 slot near the water pump and USB 3 headers. Left of these, we see LN2 mode pins, and then a set of troubleshooting and boot buttons that are always nice to have and generally on these higher end motherboards. We're expecting between $200 and $300 for the Crosshair board. Biostar also officially announced their motherboard lineup the other day, but we already detailed basically all of their major board offerings in our previous content from CES. So if you're curious about that, you can check that content. We'll link one of them in the cards or something like that for the video. In other Ryzen news for today, there are some new die shots of the Ryzen architecture, and these were posted by a Japanese site, PC Watch. They've been reposted a million times at this point. Uh, but basically, there are shots of the die. We can see individual cores, one of the individual cores, and then a CCX complete diagram. The die shot mostly details things we already knew, like the presence of a single floating point unit and single energy unit per core, rather than Bulldozer's old design of one FPU shared between two energy units. The die shot also shows the layout of the core complex modules, which will contain four cores, each with their own L2 cache and flexible L3 cache split between them. This isn't particularly new information, but the images are, so we can actually see what the thing looks like now, and that's of course important to really just getting a better idea of how it's laid out. And AMD plans to use this CPU design going forward, so get familiar with it because there's a good chance you'll be seeing this for future generations following Ryzen. And in terms of process, AMD is finally mostly at parity with Intel at this point. They're both 14 nanometer process. Intel's is technically denser packed than AMD's version, but they each have their own characteristics and will obviously not really be able to validate anything or how performance is until we've got it in hand. So uh, stay tuned for the Ryzen review. Be sure to subscribe for that so you don't miss it. Links in the description below as always for the full article which is just a bunch of news and some sources. If you want to check out other Ryzen coverage like the motherboards, we've already covered MSI, Biostar, Gigabyte, and at least one other brand. We'll link that in the description below. As always, Patreon link in the post troll video or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.